Let's have a look at some sodium. We're going to look at the reaction of sodium with oxygen in the air. If we see our piece of sodium, we see it looks pretty much like a rock. This is because what we're seeing is a coating of sodium oxide because sodium reacts with oxygen in the air. In fact, it's stored under oil to keep oxygen and water away from the sodium. Let's cut a fresh surface and observe it. Do you see that the fresh surface is quite shiny? It goes dull fairly quickly as the oxygen in the air reacts with it. I'm going to cut another fresh surface for you so that you can compare. Do you see how it's already become more dull? In only a small amount of time. It's reacting with oxygen in the air around us and that's producing sodium oxide. Let's look at the reaction between magnesium and oxygen. This is not as fast as the reaction between sodium and oxygen because magnesium's not as reactive. I have my piece of magnesium ribbon and my Bunsen burner. I'm gonna place the magnesium in the hottest part of the flame and let's see what happens. It's a very, very bright light. You don't want to stare at this light for too long. It can really damage your eyes. Let's have a look at the product of this reaction. We started out with shiny grey magnesium and now we have a white powdery substance. This is magnesium oxide. Let's look at the reaction between aluminium and oxygen. I have a piece of aluminium. It's a shiny grey colour. Can you see how shiny it is? Let's put it into the Bunsen burner flame. We can see immediately that it is melting in the Bunsen burner flame. Just going to try and heat it as much as I can. Do you see the bit that's been in the Bunsen burner flame? Do you see how it's not shiny anymore? Now it has a coating of aluminium oxide. This is an ionic compound and therefore isn't shiny. Now it's time to look at the reaction of zinc with oxygen. Zinc is also a shiny grey metal. You can see how shiny that is. Now I'm going to heat that in my Bunsen burner flame and see what we get. You can see that this is also melting in the Bunsen burner flame. I'm not going to leave it over the Bunsen burner because I don't want bits of molten zinc dropping down the barrel of the Bunsen burner. Can you see any change? Let's have a look at what happens when we put an iron nail into the Bunsen burner flame. Mostly all that is happening here is that the nail is glowing red hot. Now I'm going to sprinkle iron filings into the Bunsen burner flame. By increasing the surface area of the iron, I should be increasing the rate of reaction. Oh, do you see the sparks? The iron will ignite much more readily when it has higher surface area. I have some steel wool. This has really high surface area. Let's see how that burns in the Bunsen burner flame. We're now going to see how steel wool burns in pure oxygen. Well, really it's just air enriched with some extra oxygen, but it should be enough to really support the combustion.